we're live! Woohoo! Welcome along, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. If you're watching the recording of this, welcome to the recording. You can skip the first few minutes if you're watching the recording, but not if you're live. If you're joining me live, let me know in the comments where are you joining from? Where are you in the world? I always find that fascinating. Uh, whilst you're doing that, because I'm slightly in your future, let me introduce myself. For those that have never seen an Adorama live with me before, Hello! My name's Gavin Hoey. I'm one of the presenters right here on Adorama TV and we are live for the next hour talking about perhaps the most useful background you could possibly have, question mark at the end. But I'm not on my own. I mean, I am on my own. It's really weird. I'm sort of on my own in here, but I have a, a bunch of people the other side of the camera. I mean, I have got the dream team, so you can't see her, but you can hear her. I've got the awesome Sam woo, on woo, the comments. Woo, 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 woo. Hey, everyone! Lots of people here. Are they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't all know, I can't see. No, you can't, I can't see them either, but they're all commenting, which is lovely. Um, so do you want to know where everyone's from? Yes, please. Everyone. Uh, so absolutely. We got no, not Alan everybody. from Bushy Park. Alan from Bushy Park. Who was here well, last week. He was absolutely here <laughs> on the farm, yeah. Uh, we've got Brian, who's in Toronto, Canada. Um, let's have a look. Some exotic ones in here. I mean, exotic we... for us, bearing where we are, yeah. Yeah. Um, Keith in New Zealand. It's currently stupid o'clock. So it's the first time. time he's seen you live. Um, <laughs> Adone from Mexico. Um, we've got Kuwait. That's a first, I think. Al Jawad. Um, uh, Maryland. Now, I always think of cookies <laughs> when um, someone's yes. from there. So it's Lisa in Maryland. I hope there's lots of cookies there. Awesome. <laughs> uh, on the Super Switcher today, we have the amazing Freya. You can't see her and you can't hear her, but she is doing the, the switching of the, the cameras. Um, yeah, it's going to be brilliant. She's got, she's got actually a whole bunch of other technical stuff to do. So uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I also have a model, but we'll, we'll get to Chloe in a second, because first of all, I've got to set my, my camera up. So let me come and do this. So we're going to be doing some photography and we're going to be taking pictures of this grey background over here, which you can kind of see a little bit. Oh, look at that. She's, she's on it today. The switcher is working. So we have this rather nice grey paper background right down the bottom. I have a, a large lump of metal, which is just holding it and keeping it relatively flat. So that is my go-to one studio background. If you could only have one background in the studio for me, it's going to be this. At some point, someone's going to put in the comments, what background is it? It's hopefully in the description of the video. I think it's Savage and I think it's Thunder Grey. It's probably Thunder Grey. I can't remember. It's one of the greys. It's quite a dark grey. I used to have somewhere up there a little bit lighter grey. You can't see it, so I'll shot. But um, recently I've sort of switched to a darker grey because it works better for what we're going to do. But you'll see, we're going to turn it white, black, coloured, patterned, um, all sorts of things we're going to do with that background in the next hour. So whilst that's happening, let's just switch my camera on. There's always things I forget to do on lives, including turning my camera on and setting the tethering. I'm oh, sorry, there we go. I'm, <laughs> I'm on it, I'm on it. <laughs> So let's just do that. So whilst I'm setting this up, I'm going to introduce you to our model today. We've got the awesome Chloe. Give her a huge round of applause. Way! <laughs> Hiya, Chloe. That, that's, imagine that there is about 30 people out there clapping. <laughs> that's, that's it. So Chloe is the model. Great to have you back in. And now it's the 1st of September. We're back inside of the studio rather than outside, which is lucky because it was raining today. So that's pretty good. So um, before I get going, I'm going to check in, just make sure we don't have any technical issues. We're all good on the technical department. Yeah, seems to be good. I think everyone uh, can see and hear everything, hopefully. You sound surprised. I, I do. Because <laughs> you know, there's normally a little hiccup, isn't there? If it's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong in our lives. Uh, yes. Andy said, uh, ask Chloe if her eye is better now. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to go in for close-ups. You'll be fine. So. Okay, so let's start with the, the simplest use of a background, and that is not to show the background. So it's a dark grey background. The easiest thing to do with this is actually to make it disappear. So that's where I'm going to start. It's already fairly dark. Let's make it even darker as we turn the gray background into a black background. So a little bit of technical stuff. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we're going along, of course. But the light, my go-to light for in the studio is the Flashpoint Explore 300. We'll also use an Evolve 200. Why do I like those two lights in the studio? Because they use the same battery, which is so useful. 
Uh, I've got a softbox. The softbox doesn't really matter whether it is a round one or an oval one or a, an umbrella, whatever your choice is, um, it's fine. I'm just using this rectangular one today, a classic three foot by two foot. And what I'm gonna do with the softbox is turn it on its side and then, Chloe, do you wanna just turn and face me? I'm gonna put this, have a seat, yeah, have a oh. seat. You'll be standing long enough, so <laughs> have a comfortable seat for a minute. I'm gonna put it as close to Chloe as I reasonably can something like that okay so note where she is in the softbox it doesn't matter that it's not perfectly straight but you know there we go um, she is positioned right at the back right at that far end almost all of the light is in front of her so from chloe's point of view she's got a lot of this white surface that she can see and that should help to wrap it around a little bit and give us nice soft wrap around lighting okay let's just see we should take a meter reading and do this let's do it properly I know it's live, but let's do it properly. And it takes a moment, but it's worth it. So we could do trial and error. We could just sort of guess, but I'm gonna just uh, take a little meter reading. Here we go, Chloe. And I'm gonna try and get this to F8 because that's a good place to be. So my settings, they're likely to bounce up and down between F5.6 and F8, but it'll always be ISO 200, 250th of a second, because those are my native settings for my Olympus camera. Well, actually, no, it's not an Olympus anymore. It's an OM. OM camera, the OM1. Okay, let's go around here, here we go. Okay, so hopefully in one second, uh, there we go. That should pop onto the screen. -da! Look at that, there we are. So we have a nicely lit exposure on Chloe. We have a black background and we have a rather obvious, off obvious? What's an obvious? <laughs> it's a technical term. Don't worry, I'll explain about that later. An obvious softbox in the shot. It's dead easy to take that out in post-processing. Black paintbrush, job done. There is another way I can do it as well. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. So if we come back to me, Frey, here we go. Oh, look at that, she's on it. Um, do you wanna try the top camera? This could work. Yeah, there we go. So I can angle the light. Now you might've heard about feathering of the light. I've made a video about feathering the light. We have loads of videos on Adorama TV about feathering of the light. Normally we feather the light like this. If I go any further, I will hit you, Chloe, so <laughs> I'll try not to. As Daniel always says, if you're gonna hit somebody, use a softbox because it's soft. I love that joke, that's so good. Uh, instead, I'm gonna feather it this way. What, that's mad. I'm feathering it towards the background, but only ever so slightly. What I've done is I feathered it away from my camera position. So if I take the same shot again, here we go. Let's see if you can spot the difference. Wait a second. Where's the softbox gone? I haven't moved it, I've just angled it. You might, I mean on my screen, I've got a very dodgy monitor to look at. I can just about see it. Uh, depending on how bright your screen is, you might be able to see it. I can't actually see it on this screen, that's pretty good. So what I've done is I've just put the softbox in the shadows. If I just take the same shot in aperture priority mode, here we go, you'll be able to see exactly what's going on. <laughs> if I turn the flash off, <clears throat> nobody look at this picture. No one look at this picture, nothing to see here. <laughs> here we go. This is not my greatest photo, but you get the idea. You can see what's happening. The edge of the softbox is here and it's basically in shadow. That's, that's the secret, it's, it's in shadow. So if you see the surface, it's gonna be obvious, but if you just turn the softbox away, now you have a nice deep black background. That's an easy one. That works quite well. So if you're watching this live, you get a distinct advantage over those of us that are watching this on repeat, because you can ask questions. So if you've got any questions, get them into the comments whilst I'm going along. The more observant of you will have noticed that everything on this side of Chloe is dropping into the shadows. So I'm gonna put a little separation light, which is, there we go, so we can get it in. There it is, the Flashpoint Evolve 200. Note, it says it's upside down, but it's pro. See, I'm a professional, it says it on my lights. That's, that's how it works, isn't it? There are some advantages. Have you lost your, uh, your <laughs> Sorry, there's things happening in the background. Sam normally waves a question card at me every time there's a question and she's lost her question card. So that's it, no questions. You'll have to think of something else. What can you wave instead of a question um, card? I'll have to, um, I don't know, wave my clipboard. 
I feel out of control. I know. Go on, go on then. I've forgotten what I was going to ask now. <laughs> um, uh, bear with me. Ah, um, oh, there we go. Vivek asked, what lens are you using? Ah, that's a good question. Let's bring it in. <laughs> Hang on. Let's try not to knock anything over. Good question. So the camera is the Olympus OM-1. Oh, it looks enormous on this angle. And the lens is the Olympus uh, 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8, which if you had a full frame would give the similar crop to a 24 to 80 millimeter. Okay, and it's mostly out normally around about the, the, uh, the, 20, uh, the 40 mil end, which is about 80 mil equivalent. Okay, go on then. Oh, look, you've written question on a piece of paper. Clever. Have, yeah. So Seth asked, does that carpet out you absorb light from bouncing off that floor? Seth, that is a really good question. I hate this carpet with a passion. I mean, I genuinely hate it. It's here for one reason and one reason alone. It's for the, the acoustics. So it absorbs the, uh, the room. We, we tried it without when we first moved in and it sounded like I was in St Paul's Cathedral. It was beautiful if you're a singer. Nobody needs to hear me sing. <laughs> Okay, um, but I guess it does a bit, but yeah, most of it bounces off the roof. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a reason I should say the reason I hate it is because it just all the fluff comes up constantly. Okay, where were we? We're going to put a little separation light in. Here we go. Whoa, that's what happens when you switch your, your flash off and back on again. <laughs> okay, don't, oh, I don't think anyone can see that. That's good news. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Lovely. Go to this picture frame. That's much better. There we are. <laughs> so a little bit of uh, separation light, just a little catch light in there. The advantage of the Pro. So I, I said a minute ago about using the Pro. There is an advantage. That's at 1 128th power. What I'm going to do is actually turn it down to 1 256th power. So that's the difference between the standard uh, Explore 200, Evolve 200, one of them, and the Pro version is that you can turn it down lower which seems crazy, but actually is super useful because you can just take that down a little bit less in the brightness. So that's at 256, that's at 128. So you can just see how that's a little bit. Oh, look at that, I caught the edge of the softbox as well. Just to remind us that's how we're doing it. Okay, so black backgrounds. Are we good? We'll keep going because we are 12 minutes in and we've got you okay? Yeah? Oh, I thought you were going to ask a question. I thought you had your hand up. Yeah. I was like... <laughs> you, are, you are allowed to ask questions as well. That, that's fine. <laughs> Chloe has a question. Oh, similarly, if you do have any questions for Chloe, I've got a microphone for Chloe. And, you know, and she's so good at karaoke, she can't wait to have a go. Is that right? Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> All right, okay, so uh, we've done black backgrounds. Let's take the same light and move it around a little bit. So I'm going to get the same light and put it in behind Chloe like this and I'm going to drop it down so it's sort of hidden behind her like that. So the idea with this is if we take this setup and take a light, fire it at the background, I should get a little bit of light on this background. But there's different ways that we can work with this. Let me just show you the the go-to setting, if you like. This is it. You sort of stick the light behind your model. You remind them not to lean backwards because, you know, they don't bounce so well. But um, Chloe's a, a professional. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't need to remind you. You're fine. Okay. What power should I put that light on in the background? It's a rhetorical question. I don't know. Um, let's leave it exactly where it was before. We'll put it on one 256th power. Okay. Start where you ended up. Okay, here we go. And the result is... <clears throat> um, yeah, something went wrong. Now, I'm not going to explain what went wrong on that one because I like to leave a little bit of mystery, um, but I may have fixed it. There's a, a magic button that fixes things on, on the side of the flashes. If it ever goes wrong, just there's a little kind of... There's a magic fix button, which is uh, really useful. Here we go. Okay. So that is 256th power, which I think is just right. That just adds that little bit of light back there. But can you see a flaw in my brilliant plan? Anyone spot any problems? Anything? 
Yeah. So the black background with the close light works really well right up until this point where it kind of gets in the way. So I'm going to have to move it. That's just life. We'll elevate it up a little bit. We'll angle it slightly down. Not that it makes a huge difference, but it always makes us feel better as photographers. Um, there we go. Something like that. Okay. Lovely. So same position, just out of my shot. But what happens if you move a light? If you move a light, you change the power. So move a light, re-meter the light. Um, here we go. Actually, we don't have to do this by flash meter. Not everybody's got a flash meter. We can do this by trial and error. Okay. Uh, Chloe, what, what do you recommend? What would you recommend as a starting power? <laughs> I have no idea. Should we try 1 16th? Yeah. <laughs> top, top tip, if anyone ever asks you what, to, what should you start at, always say 1 16th. That's, that's kind of work, unless you've got pro photo, different lighting setup. But yeah, 1 16th works beautifully for most occasions. And Chloe is pretty much bang on, I'd say. Look at that, good guess. Well done. It's like you knew. How do you know these things? Um, maybe just a little bit more light. Let's take that up a stop to an eighth. Okay, it's maybe a little bit hot and a little bit too bright. So somewhere in between, you can't really do in between because we work in third stops. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I can live with that. Okay, so that works quite nicely, but I can change the background light. Chloe, what do you reckon I should put the background light on? One sixteenth. One sixteenth, <laughs> there's, a, there's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Okay, just for Chloe. So let's, uh, let's give you a little close-up, because I know that's, I forget to do this occasionally. Oh, it's going to focus on Chloe's face unless I do that. There we are. So there's where we are. That is the background light on group B at 1 16th power. And that is the foreground key light at just over 1 16th, nearly 1 8th. Okay, here we go. 1 16th power looks, if I can get it, there we go, there we go, like this. Okay, and that's really nice. I like that. That works really well. There's a nice gradation between the bright spot in the center and then the gray falling off at the edges. So that's very nice. What if you want to change it? How else can we make this different? Well, what we can do is I can get this light, move it. It's very easy, isn't it? You, you put a light down, it works, and then you don't move it for the rest of the lighting session. I've done that so many times, you think, Nailed it, that's good. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this light and move it closer. Imagine you have a really small studio space where you just don't have a lot of room. So you have to put your light this close to the background. It's, it's a thing that happens a lot of the time. So still got the gray background. Now the light is about a foot away from the background or about 30 centimeters. Uh, it's really close. What's gonna happen? What in your mind, what do you think is going to happen? At one point, we just find out. We just take a photo. <laughs> in my mind, I've got an idea. Let's see if it works. OK, same power, nothing changing. Here we go, Chloe. OK. Ta-da! Yeah, if you thought that, congratulations, you're spot on. <laughs> see what I did there? Spot, OK, no, no just me. <laughs> spot of light. Wasted, wasted I am around here. <laughs> so the closer you move your light, the, the more intense it becomes, but the less room it's got to spread. Okay, so you can, you can kind of work with that. You can get interesting lighting positions, but here's a, little, here's a little trick, a little sort of work around. I take off the reflector and I run with, let's bring it closer so you can see it. Here we go. Okay, so if I take off the, the reflector, which was giving us that, round shape of light and go with just the bare bulb. Okay, so that is just the, the bare bulb. What's going to happen to the light now? I'll put it in the same place, more or less. Close enough, isn't it? There we go. I'll put the reflector somewhere where I won't forget it, which is of course a lie because I will immediately forget where I put it. But there we go. Uh, we'll leave it on the same power because, well, let's make life easier for ourselves. Okay, and the end result is 
really nice. <laughs> you still have that nice gradation. It's even softer than using the reflector and bringing the reflector backwards. It's really gentle because it is an omnidirectional light source. The bare bulb, the light goes literally all the way around. It really does look really nice. It's really good. I like that. So let's just see if I can actually straighten it up because I noticed it's a bit wonky. There we go. Um, perhaps we can just take a few photos like that. Chloe, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's just take two or three photos. I might just, if you're going to do a little bit of posing, I might just spin the light around. There we go. I'm probably going to go vertical. There we go. Really nice. So if you're watching us live, this is your chance to get some questions in for me or for Chloe or for Sam. Or Frey, what game are you going to be playing? That's uh, all interaction is good. And if you haven't liked us, if you're just watching us now and you're thinking, oh, this is nice, hit the like button. That really helps with the, uh, the feed as well. So it's really hard to talk and actually take photos. These are great. <laughs> Quite a challenge. Multitasking. I know. Yeah, it's yeah. difficult, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, beautiful, lovely, I love those. So that was really nice, I like that, that gentle grey gradient. It looks really good, especially with this darker grey background. And for those that are wondering, let's just do one more. I'm just going to take it down to 164th power, just so if you're thinking, it's a little... Oh, yeah. Nobody looked there, no, no, don't look at that one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> take it down to 164th power. <clears throat> yeah, wrong light. There you go. So we can have just a little less intense, so that is a much, much more subtle effect. Remember, if I didn't have that background light on, it would be black. Just do a two or three like that, Chloe. Fantastic. So that's incredibly subtle. Beautiful. Okay, there we go. That's great. I've got to remember we're live and we're only two out of six. And we're 20 minutes in. Goodness. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. There's a couple of people have said, could you put a gel on the uh, back light, but you know. I mean, we could. Should we do that? <laughs> <laughs> that may have been the plan. <laughs> oh, I see, I've lost my reflector. Okay. Lost it already. <laughs> oh. I, I was going to say, actually, no one saw that. It was just out of shots. <laughs> Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Okay, so we've done black backgrounds, we've done grey backgrounds. Yeah, the, the, one of the reasons I use grey is because it can be any colour you want. Literally, anything you like. I mean, unless it's like polka dot or something like that, that's a bit harder. But actually, we might be able to do that. It's not impossible. It's, I'm saying it might not be impossible. We, we might get to that later. Um, what colour would you like? I'll open it up to the audience. What colour would you like? I'm not going to give you all the colours under the rainbow. What would you like? Here we go. Oh. Any, any preference? Uh, we've got blue. blue. Blue? Blue. Come on, it's not a Daniel. Green. This is not a Daniel Norton Red. session. <laughs> clear. Clear. <laughs> That's Seth, clear. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's, let's put blue on because it's Adorama. And it wouldn't be an Adorama Live unless somebody did a blue background, would Kick it? Kick says hot. Oh, we got kicked in. Yeah. Yay, I kicked. Purple, orange. Yeah, we've got loads of comments. So, yeah, any Kick, of those. Kicks will be with Freya on Adorama XP in, have we got an hour and a half? It's time. God, oh, blimey, it's going around quick. Okay, so um, I put a blue gel on it. I'm not going to change the background power because that's where it was. So, let's start where we left off. I'm not going to move the key light because it's not really about the key light for this session. Okay, let's just see what we get. I mean, that's, that's not bad, is it? It's nice. That's nice. I'm getting a nice from Sam. That's, that's unusual. That's good. <laughs> I think that's probably more for the foreground than the background. But uh, yeah, that is nice. That's nice. What about if you'd like something a bit more intense? So here's where it gets interesting. So that was this power. Hold on. It's a little bit bright. Oh, there we go. Yeah, can you see that? You can see that, can't you? 164th power. That was the power for the background. What happens if I turn it, oh, I don't know, up? Let's go 
Uh, we'll go to Chloe's favourite, 1 16th power. She loves 1 16th power. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we've taken it up and we get this. Okay, so quick bit of maths. Can I be picture in picture? Let's put, stick me on. Here we go. There we go. Yes, Rose got it. Okay, so maths. Here we go. 1 64th power. One more stop would be 1 32nd power. Two more stops would be 1 16th power. Okay, so we've gone up two stops since the last photo. If I want to go up another two stops, where do I need to be? What power do I need to dial in if I want two more stops of light on that background? I'm at 1 16th power now. What do I need to dial in? There's a question. I mean, I can literally hear pencil and paper going over behind us. <laughs> They're on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Four, quarter. Quarter, 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 quarter. Oh. Quarter. See, they're clever. I'm going to ask difficult, more difficult questions. You, you should. Okay. Yeah. It's not All a right. test, though, is it? <laughs> there's no prize. It's a test, but there's no prize. There we go. So a quarter power will take us up to this. Okay? That's kind of nice. All right. Okay. Let's do Chloe's favourite colour. What's your favourite colour, Chloe? I'm going to say yellow. Say, yeah, say yeah, yellow. Yeah, yellow. Yes, good, good answer. <laughs> is it green? It's not green, is it? It's yellow. Definitely yellow. <laughs> we could actually do green. I, I found a green somewhere, but I don't know green. I don't know anything that goes with green. Okay, here we go. So yellow it is. I quite like yellow as a demonstration color. Let me show you why. So let's go back to 164th power. Here we go. 164th power and yellow looks like this. I mean, ooh, that's not good, is it? I mean, it's almost, it looks a little green. It does look there a little green. Yeah, <laughs> just for you. I mean, our screen is truly hideous. Don't look at that screen. Uh, but there is definitely a little bit of sort of, there's a bit of greenish, yellowish going on there. Okay, that's 1 64th. Let's go up two stops. 1 16th. Here we go. 1 16th power. Two more stops. It's looking better. Just one quarter power. Okay, here we go. Let's bring up. Let's go up there. Here we go. Okay, wow. Okay, so we get a lot of difference in color between the different powers and it shifts, it's, it becomes a different color, particularly right in that center and then sort of bleeds. Oh, I'm on half. Oh, I went too far. Hold on. Got carried away. Well, let's give you some props. Let's give you a. Um, okay, we'll give you some sunglasses. Have some sunglasses. Okay, so. <laughs> sunglasses are in. I'm going to turn on my modeling lamp so I can see the reflection. These are mirrored sunglasses, which means if I get this in just the right place, we should be able to get a reflection in the mirror of the softbox. This is where a round softbox might have helped. Okay, Chloe, I'm going to guide you. If you can look a little towards me, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Uh, I might have to get the light closer. We'll live with it. Okay, we're going to go square. Okay, that's great. Love this. <laughs> oh, so uh, drop your chin down a little bit. There you go. Okay, we have some other yellow sunglasses in here. Let's, let's try these. I have a very large, extensive collection of sunglasses. <laughs> there you go. Great stuff. Okay. Looking straight at me, Chloe. Boom. That's great. Love that. Okay, that's cool. Like that. That's fun. So we can tie in the, the props or whatever you might be working with, with the colour of your background. Um, we've got a little bit of time. We're doing it right for time. So maybe we can just shift the lighting around a little bit. Let's move that slightly so if you're watching us live we're 30 minutes into the live stream halfway blimey that went quick if you're watching us live and you haven't clicked on the like button why not click on the like button immediately and if you have any burning questions you'd like to get answered pop them in the comments if you're watching the recording and you've made it this far a well done uh, and b we will look at the uh, the comments and then try and pick them up if there are any burning questions but there's no guarantee you stand a much better chance of being here live okay Da -da -da -da. right let's get this up there so 
popping this on the top, locking it in. Not really the right bit of kit for this, but it'll do with what we've got. Mm -hmm. Oh, tie myself in knots. Oh, what I need is a sandbag quite urgently. So I'm going to grab this. Yeah, I'm just going to spin that around so the long leg is out front. Okay. And then the weight is over the long leg. And then go grab a sandbag, safety first. Do -do -do. Oh, goodness, that's, that's, that's a heavy sandbag, actually. Boom. All right, top tips for sandbags. Um, if you're using a sandbag, make sure that when you kick it, it swings. If it doesn't swing, if it's stuck to the floor, it is not working as a sandbag. It's holding the, the carpet down rather than anything else, which is not what you want. Okay. A little bit of beauty lighting. That's better. Well, it's not better. That's, that works. Okay, beautiful. So what I'm looking at is the catch lights in Chloe's eyes just to make sure they're there. Catch lights, not your eyes. I realize that sentence didn't quite come out how I intended. Um, it's a close light. That's re-meter. Okay, okay, here we go. Popping this near your chin. F9, pretty close. We're at F8. We're still at F8. F9, here we go. Just to prove the point so everybody can see what I see, which is... <laughs> face detect is a wonderful thing until you don't want it to focus on someone's face. How's that? Oh, that way, we can get that one. Yeah. That's it's technically face. worse. <laughs> Oh, it just, oh, there we are. Oh, yay! Technology, it works. Okay. <laughs> Let's hang that up so I can find it again in the future. Okay, so we're just going to leave whatever gel we've got on the background. Lovely. So this is beauty lighting. It's overhead lighting. It is little catch light in the eyes. Absolutely gorgeous. Looks lovely and still has the yellow background, which is great fun. I like that. That's nice. Can you go through the equipment you're using quickly? Um, the camera and lens and yep. um, the lights as well. Please. Okay. There are a few people that have joined us. Okay. So we have, let's start with the camera. Now the camera is perhaps the, the least important bit. I know OM wouldn't like me to say that, but it is. It's just the, the camera is doing the capture bit. I'm using the new OM-1. Uh, the lens is uh, perhaps more useful. I'm using the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8. Not that we're anywhere near f2.8, but uh, that's what I'm using. I'm tethering in via a tether tools cable to my laptop way over there. And then the lights, there are two lights in this setup. There is a key light, which is the Flashpoint Explore, or is it the Evolve? Let me get, I always get these muddled up, so let me get this right. Yeah, it's the Explore 300 Pro which is my key light, and the Evolve 200 Pro with a gel around the back. Okay, that's that. Okay, cool. Uh, oh yeah, color. I was gonna put a bit of color. So what if you wanna do something a little bit more interesting? Interesting, challenging, different, weird. Take your pick of words. What if you wanna have split color? You want half your gray background to be red, and you want half your gray background to be blue. I mean, I can't imagine why, but we're gonna do it because that's what we do on tutorials. Because other people have more creativity than I do. I mean, you might wanna do a different color mix, but this will show you quite graphically what we've got. So I've got a second Evolve 200. This isn't the pro version, this is the, the standard version. This one has a blue gel, like that. And this one over here has a red gel in it. They are both on the same group. I'm gonna set them both to the same power. And just gonna find a camera. And let's see what we get. So let's put them about a quarter power. Let's see what happens. Okay, quick test photo. I'll take the glasses away because no color's gonna match this. Ta-da! <laughs> How's that? Was that what you were expecting to happen? We did this earlier and it wasn't that dramatic. That's quite, <laughs> that's quite good. I'm just gonna take a little shot above your head. Here we go. Because it's actually just the join between the two where you might be able to see a little bit of purple coming through as they bleed in together. So having lights that are 
opposite sides but pointing at the background gives you this split of colour. And I mean, I, I, uh, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> let's move things around. Let's, let's um, shift the lights around a little bit. Um, I don't think the top camera is going to help. No, I think all you're going to see is... Okay, that will work. That's better. Okay. I, I'm going to put something back here. I'm going to get the lights and I'm going to put them next to each other. So rather than having them separated out, I'm going to put the lights right here next to each other. Right, right here, right now, indeed. You got a question? Far away. Uh, Simon asked, uh, why... Uh, battery studio lights are not main powered. Oh, Simon, that is a brilliant question. So the reason for that is this. Um, I, can, I can walk around, I can pick up a light and, and move it about. Um, I'm not tied down to it. So battery powered lights give you flexibility. They give you the ability to move around your studio and they give you one less thing to trip over, which is um, a cable. Um, mains powered lights, I mean, they, they don't run out of battery, and anyone who's ever done a shoot where you haven't been keeping an eye on the battery level, which is everybody, uh, will know how frustrating it is when you suddenly hear that sort of beep, 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 beep. It's just getting to the good stuff. So you don't have that, but the, the main advantage for me is it is just the freeing up of the, the cables. The only cable left in here is my tether cable. And although I've tried tethering with Wi-Fi, particularly when we're doing a live session, I like cables for tethering, but for everything else, the less cables, the better. You've had a couple of people ask, um, why not a white background? Why not a white background? Because, that's a good question, because we haven't got to it yet. Oh, do you mean why am I not using a white background? That is a fantastic question. Here, here's the thing. If you have a really big studio space, you don't need a grey background. If you've got room uh, to get distance between your subject and the background, it's naturally going to go grey even if it's painted white. We don't have that room. It doesn't matter where I go, I cannot get this studio wall painted white to go anything other than very light grey. Light just bounces around in here and always hits that background at some point. So if you have a, a proper professional studio with lots of space, White will work in exactly the same way. The, the acid test is what happens if you take a photo um, without the flash firing. If you can get your background black with, uh, not without the flash firing, with just the key light firing, if you can get your black, bound, black background with just the key light, then you're fine. But for me, with the key light, I'm always gonna light my wall. So it's a size thing. That would have been much quicker. I should have, that, edit that in, edit that bit out and just say it's a size thing. Sure, Seth can do that. <laughs> okay, where were we? Oh yeah, okay, so um, here we go. So lights are now next to each other. I've lost track of what power they're on and they're actually turned off because I turned the trigger off. So uh, yeah, no flash, no picture. Always good to do that at some point. Okay, cool, there we go. So what we have if we put the lights next to each other is a very, very, very different look to that one. So that's lights at opposite ends of the, the background. And that's two lights placed next to each other. Two very different results. And the reason I've gone with blue and red is so you can see graphically the difference. You might want to choose something that's a bit more harmonious. Um, but you can mix up the results in different ways. Close together, further apart. Okay. So that's that. Okay. Let's move on. How are we doing? We've got 20 minutes to go. 20 minutes to go. Goodness me. Okay, so let's get rid of those. There was a little uh, reason for putting these two lights next to each other and doing it this way. It's, it's almost like I've planned this talk. I know, it seems amazing that there's any planning gone into this whatsoever, but there was a little bit of planning because I'm gonna leave those right there. They're not going anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that gray background go white. So we've made it go black. We've made it go gray. We've made it go lots of colors. Let's see if we can make it go white. Now, I'm gonna set myself a little challenge because I'm a fool and I like to make life difficult for myself and I like to make it difficult when we're live. 
So I'm going to do this without taking a single photo. I'm going to make this white, then take a photo, and you can judge whether I succeeded or not. Why am I doing this? This is a daft idea. Okay. To do this, it helps enormously if you have a flash meter. Okay, this is my flash meter, my Sekonic 30... 308S. It's so old, the numbers rubbed off. But it's, uh, it's on there somewhere. There it is, 308S. It is old like you wouldn't believe, but this little thing is priceless because it will allow me to make my white background white without doing anything at all. So here we go. I'm going to put these two lights on half power. Okay, so I've set those two lights up at half power. Yep, there we go, half power. Okay, they're on group B for background. It's not what it means, but uh, it kind of works. And I'm going to take a meter reading off the back of Chloe's head. Okay, here we go. Back of Chloe's head, meters at F7.1. Okay, F7.1, let's take another one because you never believe the first. Still F7.1. F7.1. Remember that. In fact, I'll tell you what, make my life a little bit easier. Save the planet by turning the power down. And let's get this to F5.6. There we go. Save the planet, less battery power, faster recycle time, F5.6. Okay, so I've metered the back of Chloe's head, it meters at F5.6. I'm gonna meter the front of Chloe's head. Chloe, I'm just gonna pop this near your head, here we go. And that meters F6.3, so... Doo -doo -doo. F, there we go, here we go. The front of Chloe's head meters at... Well, you may have to take my word for it, but it's F5.6. <laughs> also at F5.6. Okay, so both the front and the back of Chloe meter F5.6. I'm going to put the transmitter back on my hot shoe. I'm going to throw it on the floor first. <laughs> I mean, it's already held together. How did I manage to break this transmitter? I don't know. It just happened. <laughs> it's already held together with uh, duct tape. Whoop, there you go, it still works. There you are, it's live. Okay, so I'm gonna take my camera and not drop it on the floor, but I am gonna change the aperture to f5.6. So the flashes are at f5.6, the camera's at f5.6, everything ties in. Is this gonna be a white background? Or is it gonna go horribly wrong? Hey, white background, there you go. So f5.6 gives me a beautiful white background like that. There's a little bit of flare coming through there, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. That's pretty good. So I can make my background go white. It's only going to be white right around the edge of here. By the time we get to the, the corners, this is already looking a bit grey, but that's relatively easy to fix in Photoshop. This is asking an awful lot for a dark background to go pure white is a little bit of a challenge but we can do it. All we need to do is give Chloe something to work with. Here we go. I'm thinking sunglasses. I'm thinking standing up. Because you've been sat down the entire time. <laughs> Make it too easy. I am, yeah. <laughs> Lovely, so you're gonna stand in front of those lights. I'm gonna raise that up a little bit. Okay. I'm already regretting that because, <laughs> not saying I'm short. There we go. So this is great because I've got the, the preview turned on my camera so I can see this really dark grey background through the viewfinder and then as the photos come in for a split second I suddenly get this really bright white shot coming in. You can see on the wide shot where my flashes stop. Okay, so there is a limit to how far I can do this. So the closer I go in the more effective this becomes. Awesome. Fantastic. Hey, hey, look at that. That was really good. Well, <laughs> so that worked all right. Again, if you're watching this live, welcome along. We have 15 minutes to go. If you've got any questions, you are, your, your clock is ticking. Uh, okay, that's good. White background, done. Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's lose one of the lights. 
So earlier I said that we could change the color of the background to almost anything except polka dot. That's kind of true, but we can put a little bit of text. Which camera am I on there? That one. <laughs> we can put a little bit of texture on the background. Or, uh, not texture, but pattern. For that, we need a very, very special piece of kit. So let me get this out of the way and let's, let's, uh, let's get the special piece of kit. Now, there are very few of these in the world. They are extremely rare. If you're lucky enough to be the proud owner of a light strainer, congratulations. The light strainer is a, a piece of photographic equipment that is underrated. Some people say it's a cutlery strainer. They're right, but if you, if you put it on something, it's black, therefore it's photographic. The light strainer has been with me now for quite some time. It is my own invention, and I have turned down literally no companies wanting to make this for me. Not one. This is my retirement. This is my pension. <laughs> it doesn't bode well, does it? <laughs> but with light strainer come great responsibility. <laughs> well, yeah, mostly, and the fact that none of the, the cutlery is... Um, Put away in the kitchen it's all kind of all over the worktop but here it is the light strainer is it's basically it's a thing with holes in okay look at that i mean it's already more exciting isn't it Ooh. i'd love to see what that's doing on the live stream so um stefan said sorry my mouse keeps going to sleep there we go um said uh very important information for you did you know you compare the two X Pro together, Master Slave, to never move the one on the device? No, I didn't. I'll have go. to go and look into that. Thank you, you very much, now. Stefan. It's uh, always something else to learn. Okay, so there we go. That's what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, piece of photographic equipment. It's you know, it's a prototype. It, it'll, it'll get better. Uh, this is still the, uh, the Mark I. It's actually the Mark II. This has got the new mounting system, um, which is, um, you know, well, it's, you know still, it's, it's still in prototype form. But that works quite well. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pop this back here behind Chloe, pointing at the background. I'm just going to reattach it. There we go. It's a quality piece of kit. Smash in. Okay, so let's see. What power should I put the light strainer on, Chloe? What would you recommend? One you reckon one sixteenth power? Let's go with Chloe's suggestion. I say she knows what she's talking about. This, this Chloe. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, one sixteenth power. Um, yeah, you, you were almost right. Almost right. I think the light strainer takes away a little bit more power. So we're going to go for a half and see what we get. Here we go. Boom. Okay, there we go. So we end up with these lovely little pattern pictures, which are really nice. I'm going to move the light because, because I can. Okay, I'm going to move the light around a little bit. Here we go. Let's drop this down. Let's drop that down. Let's get this. Yeah, it's all right. It's a soft box, as, as Daniel says. It's fine. You'll be all right. Okay, Chloe, go blimey. Oh, there's a sandbag on it. No wonder I'm yeah. really struggling with this. I've got a sandbag at the bottom. Okay, there we go. So we can pop that around about there somewhere. We've moved the light. What do we need to do? We need to re-meter the light. Not only does it give you accuracy, it slows you down, so you get a bit of thinking time, and it makes me look much more professional, which is actually quite important sometimes. Okay, that is close to where I want to be. I'm, I think I'm at f5.6, so that's where I've set the key light. f5.6, background is on goodness only knows what, but at half power. So, going vertical. I wanted to get a little bit more Chloe in. Ah, isn't that good? How cool does that look? We can take it down a little bit, so we can go to a quarter power. I'm just going to kick this light back a tiny bit. Your light strainer's getting a lot of love. Who doesn't love the light strainer? Yeah. It is a piece of photographic wonderment. Yeah, mm. that, that's exactly what everyone's saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if that, I, I'm getting the feeling there's a slight sarcasm here. There is, I've, I've never stopped developing the light strainer um, in the, the Mark II version that I've got here. Uh, this is the zoomable light ver uh, strainer version, so I can zoom it. 
there we are, look at that, that's zoomed in. So now it's, it's even closer to the end there, zoomed in version. Okay, here we go, pop that back there. I'll angle it because it makes me feel better. I'm not sure it's gonna make any difference at all. Okay, what's gonna happen if I zoom in the light strainer? What's gonna happen? Possibly nothing at all. But what will happen is a much more diffused pattern of light. Okay, so it's much more gentle because the holes of whatever you're using, the cookie that effectively is just a cookie, are closer to the light source. Light has more room to spread out around them. I'm gonna move that light a little bit, Chloe, hold on. Just mind the dangerous rug, which is determined to trip me up. Okay, that looks really good. Love it. And I can go pretty much full length and get some really nice portraits and just dappled light on the backgrounds. And we'll just move, how long have we got? got full five minutes, blimey. Okay, we'll just pop that there. Lovely. Light to the side, not expecting this to be quite so nice because it's gonna give me a little hot spot in the corner, but you know, kind of fun. Done. Okay, great stuff. So there we go, so that worked quite well. So what have we done so far? We've done black backgrounds, we've done gray backgrounds with the spots, we've done colored backgrounds of various types, we've done a pure white background, we've done dappled backgrounds, five backgrounds in 50 minutes. We've got 10 minutes to go, should we do one more? Do it. This is the simplest, probably my favorite. 10 minutes might be too long. <laughs> we'll see. So yeah, you might wanna, if you've got any questions, I need to stretch this out. <laughs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna get the gray background and leave it where it is, but move the light over to the background right up against the background like that lovely and then we're gonna elevate that up in the air like that there we go we don't need the modifier light modifier on i can turn that off there we go lovely so that's basically it it's no more difficult than that i'm going to put it flush with the wall because that uses a bit more time looks good uh, we could do this by trial and error. We could do this by metering. We can do trial and error. It takes longer, so we can do that. Uh, my B light is off. This is a one flash setup, one flash only. Let's just see, test photo first of all, Chloe, here we go. And I'm at 1.30 second power. I probably should have been at Chloe's setting. I should have been at one sixteenth, shouldn't I? Let's do Chloe's favorite, one sixteenth. And because it's such a gray background, I can actually review my histogram, which I can't put up on my screen, but I can pull up on this camera. Should we do this camera? Do you want to change the camera frame? There we go. Okay, so my histogram is looking pretty good. It's got a full extension right the way over to the highlights and a large lump in the dark shadows, exactly as you would imagine. So the histogram is telling me that that is about right exposure. Um, and that's kind of it. It's no more complicated than that. I love this lighting. It's so simple, so effective. Let's take a few photos. Here we go. Let's put it in autofocus. Hold on, Chloe. There we go. Press the wrong button. And I've also got it in the wrong view mode. There we are. Lovely. I'm off. Okay, here we go. Of course, exposure is very much what do you think is right? So although these probably are right, I'm gonna slightly underexpose them. I think that's gonna look really nice. Fantastic. Sam, have we got any questions or am I okay just to keep taking photos? Well, you can do both. Okay, I can do both. <laughs> uh, someone asked your studio size. Okay, the studio size is uh, fifth, oh, double tap, 15 feet uh, from Chloe to me, or at least wall to wall, and 17 feet from you, oh, you can't see, can we do the picture in picture? Yeah, there we go, uh, from you over to here. So 15 feet by 17 feet, except 
around about six feet from your end is all the streaming equipment and obviously I've got chairs and bits and pieces so my actual working area is about 12 feet square which is just under four meters square okay but it does mean I can sit down and take photos okay that's kind of nice like that I'm just going to pull the rug under your, from under your feet <laughs> metaphorically and physically <laughs> there we go what I've made is a lovely trip hazard for a live stream <laughs> yeah I can't imagine anything going wrong so the the lighter floor although it's underexposed looks pretty good and dark and I love this so another question yeah um, Tara asks where do you keep the rest of your backgrounds um, Yep, the rest of the backgrounds are up in the ceiling space, up in the ceiling void. So I have a whole bunch of pop-up backgrounds which are above your head, you can't see them, they're up there. And I have some paper backgrounds stored up there as well. So full use of every inch of a small home studio. So they're up in the, the rafters or in the loft space. Okay, hold on, just going to adjust it. Beautiful. Okay, really important picture. Last picture to take before we come to an end because we are pretty much at the end of the session. And it's this one. I'm going to take a really wide picture like that. In fact, because that is a little bit dark, I'm actually going to put it in aperture priority mode and do the same again. Here we go. These pictures are so useful because they allow me to see where is the light set up, what's going on, where did I put the light, uh, so I can reproduce this look again in the future. These photos, when you look at them, they are lovely, they are gorgeous, they're really nicely lit. Let's try and find one that's actually sharp. There we go. Uh, but apart from the fact that there is a hint of where the light is, it doesn't really tell you a great deal. So taking a wide shot, super, super important for your uh, understanding of where you put the lights. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, try and find one to finish on. Go there. Okay, cool. Let's bring it back onto me. So there we go. That is perfect timing. Um, Sam, have we got any more questions? Are we done? What have you done to those carpets? Yeah. Um, Look at it. <laughs> As if we didn't have enough trip hazards in here before. Yeah, it's perfectly safe. That I'm is. health and safety. That's why I have a clipboard. <laughs> it's perfectly safe. There we go. Look at that. That's uh, per perfectly safe. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> marvellous. Okay, so that brings us right to the top of the hour. So that was fantastic. We had one background in our small home studio that was black, grey, white, multicoloured, patterned, and also with a lovely gradiated effect as well. So if you're in the market for one background, grey is the one to go for if you have a small studio space. It can be a roll of paper like this Savage one, it can be a pop-up background, it, it, just grey generally is just the colour to go for. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the live stream. A couple of thank yous to do. I'd like to thank Chloe for being awesome. Woo, Chloe! <laughs> yeah, Freya on the Super Switcher did a stonking job. Brilliant, thank you very much. Uh, Sam on the comments. Thanks everyone, thanks for all your comments and thank you for all the people that answered other people's comments that we didn't get to. <laughs> I try and keep it relevant for the session, but um, yeah, thank you. Thanks Fantastic. for joining in and thanks for being all over the world. Amazing. Oh, it's nuts, isn't it? And then Seth and Adorama for letting us do this again on their channel, which is <laughs> incredible. But mostly thank you for being there yourselves. Uh, we literally couldn't do this without the audience, so thank you very much. Let people know, share it, like it, it really helps. We are back again. When are we back again? Four weeks, yeah, well, yeah, four weeks. So we're back again in four weeks' time doing something, uh, we're not quite sure what. Uh, it's quite a lot going on between now and then, but it's going to be awesome, that's for sure. Uh, and of course, Adorama has a lot of content every single day, so stay tuned to Adorama TV. And if you're in the market for a little bit of gaming, Freya is going to be live on Adorama T no, Adorama XP on Twitch. Let's get it right. Over on Twitch at, well, one hour from now. So whatever time it is for you, one hour from now, over on Adorama XP on Twitch, go join Freya for some live gaming and say hello. Okay, there you go. I'm going to bring it to an end there. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.